How in the world does a 29 year old get diagnosed with stage four kidney cancer? That is probably one of the most common questions that I get when people find out that I was diagnosed with a rare stage four kidney cancer a little over three years ago. Next question is usually what symptoms did you have or how did you find it? All super valid questions because as I was going through the diagnostic process, I was convinced that I had cancer and I could tell you I probably thought I had every cancer on the planet because that's what a vague spirally Google search will tell you. I will also tell you there's plenty of times that I thought something was wrong, Googled, and then nothing was wrong. But we're talking about how I actually ended up in this situation. Now, if you ask me if there was one common thing that I think could have helped improve the situation or helped me get diagnosed sooner, it took me about a year and a half to get diagnosed and folks kind of just thought I had anxiety for a long time. The single common factor is I wish that people could have just listened. Now, people often hear me say that I'm not mad at the physicians who missed my cancer, and that is very true. Part of that is because I didn't think that they thought that they intentionally weren't listening. They literally thought that they were trying to help me. I saw that in them, so that's why I don't feel an animosity. Like, nobody wants to let the 28-year-old walk out of their office with stage 4 cancer. But it happened, so how do we stop that? Well, say I spent the last three days at a very large conference for GU cancers. So that's like kidney, bladder, prostate. And I've spent a lot of time talking to doctors, industry, and other patients. You want to know what the most infuriating part of it all is? Almost every single person in this giant room full of people talking about how do we improve outcomes for patients, they all want to help patients. And more than ever, I'm hearing everybody talking about we need to listen to patients. But just like my physicians thought, they thought they were doing a really good job at it. And this is exactly where I feel like there is the disconnect. If I could rewind three years, I would approach every situation I had very differently as a patient. I would have said different things to my physicians because I understand their world a little bit better now. And I can guarantee you it would not have taken me a year and a half to get diagnosed. The problem isn't listening. It's the way that we're listening. And listening is also, this is a two-way behavior in street. Patients who want their physicians and the system to listen more need to take an active effort in helping that happen. For me, that's meant going to these conferences and learning more about their world so I can figure out how I can better communicate the needs as a patient in that world. It's as much me as an advocate saying, this is how I need you to listen, as it is for them to say, I want to listen. The system, the providers, everybody needs to add a seat to the table for the patient perspective. But it's also up to us to take that seat and make our voice known. Now, not everybody's gonna be able to go to big conferences and advocate. So as a patient, what's the most basic level that you can get involved? Honestly, that's telling your physician that you wanna get involved. And your physician may not have an idea of how to get involved at that exact appointment, but don't let that discourage you. I can't tell you how many physicians I've talked to at these conferences that said, hey, I had a patient that really wants to get involved, but I wasn't really sure how they could get involved or how to do that. Your physician might not know the answer, but when they're connected with it, they will connect you with it. Letting them know you're interested is the first best step. And if nothing else, they might be able to just help provide you learnings about your disease or whatever you're dealing with. Physicians may not have a lot of time, but they are expert connectors. Many people ask why I'm not bitter or upset that it took me so long to get diagnosed. And so much of that has to do with the intent. Nobody wanted that to happen to me. I also see it in all of these conferences that I join. So many providers and so many people that so desperately want to add the patient voice. They talk about wanting to add the patient voice. They all know they need to add the patient voice, but many of them just don't know how to add the patient voice. They may not have the resources to support them to do it. They may not know who to involve because not every patient wants to get involved. That's why I think it's equally as up to us as patients to surface that information. I was so scared to get involved in advocacy in the beginning. And honestly, I worked in every avenue outside of my physicians before I got involved with and told my physicians that I was interested in advocacy because I felt like that's not what those appointments were for. But my providers have also been one of my greatest resources to learning and to advocating as well. We're all in this thing together and let's use each other's skills to their best capabilities. All right, I am done with my ramblings, but I'd love to hear your thoughts.